guys, it's Chris from Daily Dose of DIY.com where I teach you how to use your Cricut machine so you can make some great things. And today I'm going to show you how to paint a giant sign like this. If you saw my last video, I showed you how to use your Cricut to get an extra large stencil and today I'm going to give you the tips to paint this sign without any bleeding paint without any peeling paint we're going to get nice crisp lines and it's going to look gorgeous when we're done let's get started so the things we're going to need to make this sign include um, a sign ready to paint right i'm going to link you down to the previous video below so you can get to this point the second thing you're going to need it comes with a free SVG too. Sorry. Faith Can Move Mountains if you want to use this design. It's free on my blog. And there's instructions to get that too. So then we're going to need some Mod Podge, our paint and sealer, and then a paintbrush. Pretty simple. I'm going to change our my camera angle really quick and we're going to get set up and start painting this. Okay, the first thing we want to talk about is the base of your board. I painted mine um, in a regular paint. You do not want to put poly over it after you paint and then stencil. You make sure you save poly for the end. If you put poly on it now, the reason is it will peel up what we're going to paint and we don't want that to happen. Okay, we also don't want our stencil to bleed. And since I painted the base, I can go over the stencil with the color I painted the base. So that would look like this, where you just take your base color and paint to the edges of the stencil. And what that does is it seals it. And if there's any bleeds, we're not going to see them because it's the same color as the base. So any bleeds won't show up. There's another thing you can do and that is use um, Mod Podge. The thing I have to caution you with on Mod Podge is if you use too much it's also going to peel up your paint on the letters that you paint. So if you're using this use just a thin thin layer. You don't want to see any white at all. You want to make sure it goes on clear. So get it very, I know you can probably see white left over from my brush, but very, very thin just to seal. And you don't have to do all the middles, just the edges of that stencil. Paint towards the stencil like you're trying to make it bleed. And that's going to seal any leaks that we might have. This is especially helpful if you're using barn wood or any of the rough pieces of wood. You'll want to make sure your stencil gets sealed. I'm going to go ahead and steal, seal it. Oh, I guess I'll go ahead with Mod Podge since we're doing so. I'm going to fast forward, hurry up and get this done. stencil all sealed with Mod Podge and now we can go ahead and paint it with our regular paint color and we won't get bleeds. You still want to be a little careful. I'm using Sea Paint um, Vintage Secrets. This is like a medium coverage paint. I usually use it for distressing wood but I forgot my black paint today so we're going to use it to paint this sign. You first <laughs> make sure your Mod Podge has dried. If you use a thin coat back where you started is already dry. Second, you still want to do like a light coat of paint. Um, this paint, if you never use sea paint, is extremely pigmented so it might not look like, even for a medium coverage paint, it might not look like I'm doing a light coat but I am and 
it's much better to do a couple, two light coats, it goes pretty quick, than to just slap on the paint and still take a chance of it bleeding. You, it should be sealed pretty good, but you still don't want paint sitting there. And another thing I forgot to mention, if you're doing this extra large sign, like in my previous tutorial, any of our seams, you want to go ahead and Mod Podge those two where they, um, where it might be close, like right in here is the seam. I sealed those so the paint doesn't bleed through where we put them together. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and get my first coat of this going. Okay, the second coat is done. I'm just cleaning off some paint I got on me. So now we're going to talk about removing the stencil without peeling up any of the paint either on our base or what we just laid down. The key to not peeling off layers of your base paint starts before you even paint your base. You want to make sure it's nice and clean. Paint will not stick to dust or dirt or grease. So clean your board, paint your board, lay down your stencil, and then seal your stencil, poly or your base coat of paint, and then remove your stencil carefully. This is just drying up. This, um, one of the reasons I love sea paints is it dries super fast, but it still looks like it's a little way to go. You can see I still have some dis distressed parts here in my sign. If you want to get that same look, um, you just do it, like as your paint's running out of paint, you just keep painting, right? And then you see as it fades, instead of putting more paint on your brush, as your paint runs out, it fades up and then just kind of looks distressed and pretty cool. The corner and we're going to start pulling sheets off from the bottom to the top. turning out pretty good and I am happy with the way things looked until we got to a couple of areas here. It's like, hello, did I forget to seal that part of my tea? And then if you move down here on the, oh, I guess I missed that before, the bottom part of my tea too and then all these letters look good until the end. I must have missed that section, but I'm happy it happened because I can now show you how to fix it if you do have a little oopsie daisy like that and get a bleed. So what we want to do is grab your weeding tool and feel free to use my weeding tool. <laughs> yeah, here's mine. Take it. Feel free to use your weeding tool to help you get out those centers of letters and help you get it started. I think you maybe saw that. And then we'll try to zoom in here and take it and do it once the paint is dry, the tip of it, and just scrape along the edge that paint off that bled through. It'll scrape right off. Blow your paint dust away versus smear it in. Unless you want, um, if it's distressed, smear it in might not make much of a difference, but just keep scraping until those lines go away. Alternatively, you can also use, if you maybe have a bigger area, um, a toothpick you can dip in your base color of paint and just use a t toothpick and cover up but I find that um, just scraping it off here is much faster and works the best so let me get these I can't believe I missed three of them let me get these letters cleaned up real quick there we go. Those areas are looking a little bit better. It's probably why the distress look came popular, right? To help hide all of our mistakes. 
Thank you so much for crafting with me today. Now you know how to paint one of these stencils without getting any bleeds or peeling paint. And even if you do get one of those pesky bleeds, you know what to do to fix it. I can't wait to see all the signs you make and all the great things you get to make with your Cricut. Thanks so much for watching. Be sure to like and subscribe and I'll see you on the next video. Bye.